Mic is on. Ugh. He hit the mic. There we go. Alrighty, so here we go again with. I'm shifting my chair. <laughs> here we go again with another round of. Well, actually, this is technically the first real round of a Thanksgiving DIY. So. I thought for the fun of it, like I mentioned in the last video, I did a lot of jewelry in the past and haven't really played around with it for a minute, but I do remember how I did a lot of it. And this one was kind of a cute one. Um, it's just a nice quick and easy little wire heart and you can either leave it as is or do the, uh, the crisscross pattern that uh, I did with a smaller gauge of wire. So, um, I don't think this, I think this might be 18 gauge, but I would recommend a 16 gauge. That should help it keep its shape a little better. And, I don't know, is this nice enough to tell me what the gauge is? Yeah, 26 gauge. It was, I, this has been around a while, but yeah, um, what I actually recommend, because it, if you can see, it's kind of a little chunky on this. I actually recommend when I did this again in, uh, oh dear, actually I just realized, I think this is larger cage, wow, but I personally liked it on the gold one. Yeah, I feel like that's slightly larger gauge. Yeah. Um, I did gold ones in a 16 gauge base and a 24 gauge um, uh, crisscross pattern. And yeah, that's actually uh, two. I don't know what the measurement is. Millimeters? I don't know. <laughs> but it's it's a difference of two of whatever the dimension is. But yeah, I actually thought it turned out way better with the uh, the nice uh, thicker gauged uh, gold with the apparently slightly larger uh, gold crisscross pattern. And these are kind of fun because they, they're they kind of unpredictable. Sometimes they turn out um, kind of like this one did. I uh, gave a lot of the other ones that I made as uh, gifts. And this one kind of ended up a little different. I didn't like how loose the wrapping was, so it kind of has a little bit of variation in the lines here. You can see some of us kind of squiggly, some of it is nice and straight, like this one came out nice and straight for the most part. But some of them are kind of squiggly and it's like, I... I'm a slight perfectionist so I didn't like the squiggly so I ended up keeping this one for myself. I didn't feel like uh, giving that away as a gift. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Um, these, like I said, they're very unpredictable. I haven't come up with any specific way of making them the exact same way every time. So they'll always kind of end up slightly different depending on how you put yours together. And uh, I, I wish I still had it or I'd, I'd at least taken a picture of it. I made this for somebody else. But, um, there was one that I made in the gold, actually, that uh, it was, uh, picture this as a bigger uh, pendant, probably closer to this size, I think it was actually a little larger. Um, it was kind of a wide heart. This one didn't turn out great because I will definitely say 
the smaller you make them, the worse the shape gets. Now, if you have, like, a, a method that might actually work out, because the other thing about uh, trying to get the curve on the edges of the heart is I do recommend... Um, this is a ring sizer. Um, so you can make, like, uh, wire rings out of it. Um, where did that one go? This was, uh, it's more of a, a thought experiment, if you will. But, uh, this particular tool is more for making things like this. And, uh, getting that nice round shape for a ring. I think this was uh, size 10 or maybe a 12, I don't know. But uh, yeah, I would definitely recommend one of these to try to help keep that curve of the heart as nice and clean as possible and you can try to keep it... I think this one has a slight bit of variation in the size of the curves, but uh, you can uh, have a little bit of a better time trying to keep the curves even so as to try to give a better look for, uh, yeah, this one was more of like the classic heart shape. The other one I did was uh, more of like a whimsical, so didn't really matter if one or the other side was smaller. But yeah, I would definitely recommend a ring sizer and jewelry pliers and... Because I, I tend to have some problems with uh, kind of keeping a hold of some things. I would totally recommend, uh, I believe these are a pair of hemostats that I got out of a uh, dissection kit. Got it for my birthday when I was younger and never used it until I learned that these things have so many different uses. They're totally a thing that I would absolutely recommend having in your uh, toolkit. If you're a crafter or a maker of any kind, these have come in handy in so many different ways. I tell you, sewing, these are awesome. But uh, yeah, crafting and jewelry making too, absolutely. And then of course, as far as the materials that you need for the heart, um, this is 16 gauge wire, and then, uh, I don't have any other, uh, silver wire in a small gauge, so just the 26 gauge that we have here. And then, of course, whatever you want to put your necklace, or your pendant on, um, you could put it on a necklace. It could be a keychain. I don't think I have... Well, just pretend this is a key ring. You could put it on a uh, a key ring like this. It'd be really cute. Um, you could put it on uh, a different kind of chain. This is kind of a, a smaller chain, more delicate looking. There's the slightly larger chain you could put it on. Or you could put it on something like this, although I... I kind of wouldn't recommend this because I think uh, the chunkiness that this has kind of detracts from the daintiness of the wire heart. Or, I don't know, maybe it amplifies it. I'm not sure. But yeah, that's what I think we'll do for today. And let's see if we can start this. So get the chain out of the way and keep this off to the side as our example and I think yeah, I can't remember sizes or anything like that but we're just gonna wing it because that's kind of the fun part about uh, jewelry making and crafting in general is you can just kind of have some fun with it and see what you make so like I said, I haven't done this in a while, but uh, yeah, I'd bend out some wire, just try to see if you can get it as straight as possible. I know it's on a, a spool, so trying to get a nice, perfectly straight bit of wire from a spool is not exactly an easy task. 
and I would overestimate as to how much you might need. I was trying to go for something maybe this size. Actually, I do kind of like a little bit bigger would be nice. Nah. I would love something a little larger, but I was just thinking uh, to try to keep with that sizing to try to match the curves. That might actually be a good idea. So we've got our nice piece of wire here. I might clip off this end because it's kind of hard to get your little loop with that. And uh, I would start off... I curved the ends in here so there weren't any uh, pokies or anything like that. It's probably easier to see on this one. Is uh, you just do that little loop on either side and then you can form your heart shape. And uh, my personal preference is I usually try to, I'm sure you can see that, the curve is kind of facing outward a little bit. Did the same on this. I think it's uh, more visually nice because it almost seems to exemplify the uh, curvature of the top of the heart. So yeah, we'll just go ahead and do that real quick. And... I'm going to keep this kind of big so it's a little easier to see, but you don't have to make your curves this large. I'm just doing it because it's a little easier to see, plus that's an awfully very nice round bit to it. Okay, let's go ahead and get that a little straighter. There we go. And then try to remember, okay, it was inward. And this is always the fun part, is trying to make sure that it curves in a similar direction so that when you lay this down, it lays nice and flat. Or as flat as you can get it. Let's curve that back out so it's nice and straight. All right, yeah, that curved a bit, but that's okay. So that's going to be our start. And then comes the fun part, is trying to decide um, It's going to be easier to do the curves first, because sometimes I would uh, try to find in the middle, bend it, and then do the curves in. But it might be easier to find the middle if you do your curves first, so let's do that. And those are facing outward. I'm going to go with the largest size on here, which is 10. And line it up. I'm trying to get the very end of the wire here on that loop. At one side of this so I can try to have some form of measurement here and come on I don't think it's gonna let me so we'll at least start it so it lays and then we'll see if we can uh, try to coax it to allow for that measurement so we can try to match it on the other side Come along. There we go. Bend that out a little bit. And let's do that to the other side too. Oh, come on. That's the fun part about working with wire is, it's, especially these larger gauges, it's it's better 
to work with a thicker gauge so it keeps shape. And yeah, that's trying to go diagonal on me. But uh, when you're done with it, uh, fighting with it and trying to get it into the shape that you want it in, it keeps your shape better. But the problem is, is uh, yeah, it uh, it's a real pain in the butt to work with. But at the very least, it is worth it in the long run because, like I said, it keeps its shape. Alrighty. How's that? Keep trying to make sure that uh, when you lay it down, it lays nice and flat. It looks like this side is not wanting to. So we'll just kind of keep working with it, trying to get it to lay nice and flat. Because when you're finished, it should lay nice and flat for you. So, oh, I did my curves backwards, so that's okay. The nice thing is, uh, because the way this wire is, and it, that was the other reason why it's actually kind of nice to do the crisscross pattern, is if you have to twist these, because I would just, to fix that, I'd just curve them in like this. Just twist it in. And poof, it's fixed. Nobody needs to know. <laughs> I mean, of course, you know, but nobody else needs to know. But yeah, and then fix it again. Make sure it lays flat. Because it's kind of like uh, the way this one lays flat for the most part. It's like just trying to fight it and get it to lay flat like that. Come along. Yep. Alrighty. That looks like we lost a bit of curve in here. So just kind of work that back in there. Alright. So, trying to find the middle with this and about every time I ever did this I didn't measure anything because I don't like measuring anything that's just how I do so and that's kind of uh, the other thing is like that little bit of charm with these is it's like this one this curve is down here this curve is up here it can be a little hard to work with but in the end, it, it gives for visual intrigue, if you will. But, yeah, like I said, I usually try to make them as even as possible. So trying to determine... It's like I might uh, use my fingies here. Like go fingertip to fingertip. Start out at the knuckle. And I'm gonna say right about here and then go ahead and start the V. Curve it up. And would you look at that? How cute is that? There's definitely going to be some things to kind of work out and get a feel for. It's like maybe you don't like... Uh, like I don't like this. So I'm trying to work it and get it to sit the way I want. And because we did that, I'm gonna go ahead and curve that back out. Yeah, that's the funny thing is, like, oh, bend it back, and it's like, no, actually, the way it is on here, and the way it lays nice, is bending it back in like that. Alright, so, if you're liking how it looks, then you can kind of start coaxing the inward part there. Alright. 
And you gotta try to get it to... One, you're trying to get it to lay right. To where it's like, you're trying to get that V in the top of the heart there. So it just kind of curve this back out. Curve that back out. And... Work your heart shape back in. You can work your curves too. Try to get them to uh, line up for you. Oh, yeah. This is the fun part. Is it's like I'm a little shaky, so this isn't uh, an easy task for me. But I still do it. Keep working that in. Try to get the shape that you're looking for. This is kind of where the uh, variability comes into play with the way these hearts are. Is uh, because there's so much tweaking involved with trying to get exactly the right end of the curve to where it actually lines up the way you need it to. That's kind of where a lot of the variability comes into play as to, well, sometimes they end up more wide, sometimes they end up a little more narrow. It's like this one kind of ended up well, like this. And you can uh, keep tweaking it and trying to get it to be a little closer to what you're looking for. I would be careful though because going too crazy with it, it's like you're going to lose a lot of the uh, rigidity of your lines here. It's like I tried to fight with this one, make sure it was nice and straight. This one, uh, because I played with it a little bit, it's got a little bit of uh, weightiness to it. But you can just kind of go with it. It's laying a little more flat. That's good. Alright. So from here, this was the other reason why I like using the uh, the more uh, rigid wire. It's like once you fight this into shape, you can uh, just put this on a necklace itself because it'll hold its shape. It should be fine. As long as nobody, like, you know, if you hung it kind of like I did this one on the corner. As long as nobody does something like that. But then again, it's like if you want to, that's where uh, you can come in with just a little piece of this wire. That thinner gauged wire. And I think I might go ahead and, I don't know, some of this, this wire is so old and chewed. I don't know how long this has been around, but it's been around for a while. I've, I've known that this has been in the kit for a very, very long time. But you can take a little piece of the, uh, uh this is 26 gauge. And... I don't like how that's sticking up. So just kind of tweak it a little more. Lays okay for the most part. And you can take this and just wrap this around. And that's going to be kind of a funky process. But you can wrap this around. Hold that nice and tight. and try to secure that area. And I'm holding on to that first bit of wire that we wrapped on there. 
You shouldn't have to after the next couple of passes. It should kind of hold itself on there. And the other thing is, uh, it doesn't lay quite nice like that, but that's okay. It's a wire. You just kind of smoosh it down. Hold that. And just try to keep working at it. Get that to, uh, sit on there and hold this heart shut. And the other thing I'm doing is I want to make sure that it still lays nice and flat because it's going to want to have this tendency to try to, uh, when you wrap it, um, it's going to want to try to fold in over itself and do that number and then it just doesn't sit right. So you just gotta, that's where the tightening comes into play. Trying to make sure that it continues to lay nice and flat. It's gonna want to fight with you, but well, that's wire. <laughs> but once you get comfortable with uh, this wrapping, you can move it where you want it. And if you don't like uh, the fact that it's kind of loose and moving a little bit, you can use like a little bit of super glue. Or if you have uh, some UV activated epoxy, that might be a good option too to just try to pop some of that on there and keep your wrapping from moving. Um, do I have one of those? I don't know if I do. Uh, not on me. I might show a picture of it uh, in the editing right here. Um, these are uh, rings that I made um, for, uh, it was actually a craft fair type event. Uh, these ones were wrapped on the ends. You can kind of see that there. And uh, I just went ahead and, and hit the wrapping with epoxy to give it a nice coating, keep it together, and keep it from, uh, because they were rings and because they were up close to skin, I wanted to make sure they wouldn't poke. So you can do the same here, or you can just, if you're satisfied with it, you're happy that it's not going to allow the heart to open back up or anything, then you can just clip that off. And usually with these necklaces, I'm not quite as uh, concerned with some of these loose wires in regards to uh, they're not going to injure skin or anything like that. But the other thing to keep in mind is uh, they may snag on clothing, so you may want to just go ahead and do that epoxy covering just as a nice finisher to make sure that it's like it keeps the jewelry together and it prevents any unfortunate situations of if you're making these to, well, I mean, even as a gift. You don't want somebody coming back to you and saying, Hey, your necklace ruined my sweater. <laughs> that would really suck. So, yeah, I would definitely say uh, if it's not for you and uh, that's up to you if you really care or not, whether it's going to be uh, snagging on anything, if you're planning on wearing it with uh, like a woven sweater or something, I would definitely go ahead and seal it. But, uh, yeah, this is just kind of... You can keep fighting these ends back in to make sure that they're not sticking out much. But, uh, yeah. So you can leave it like this. You can put, like, a... I don't have a silver one. You can put a jumper on it. Let me see. Oh, I got a gold jumper. <laughs> You can put a jumper on uh, this one, and 
then just go with that. You can put that on your chain. You could put that on the, where did that piece go that we were going to pretend was a key ring? <laughs> can't believe I don't have a key ring in here. But you can put that on there, you can, you know, have it for like your nice keys. Or you can, uh, and, well if you wanted to, you could just make these nice big heart hoop earrings. But I would say, uh, yeah. This is pretty good as it is. I just dropped the jumper. <laughs> Oops. But this is good how it is, but you could also just go ahead and wrap it. If you like the... Uh, I thought it was kind of fun because it's not perfect, but it almost reminds me of uh, chain, li uh, chain link fencing when it's in this uh, silver color with the wrapping like this. So I like to just go ahead and do the wrapping. And how I did that before, uh, that's, this is why that wire had so many weird shapes to it. Uh, so I would definitely recommend uh, newer wire and not wrapped like this. Uh, when it's wrapped around the spool, you can keep it from having those uh, weird little jaggedy bits. But, yeah, we're just gonna use this for more of the example and the, the whole I don't have any other silver wire that I can uh, do the wrapping with. I, I think the only uh, silver I got is the 16 gauge, but that's okay. So, just gonna prep a nice length of the wire for wrapping, and... I'm gonna very carefully try not to bend this too terribly much when you're going through. And the only time that you're trying to bend it is when it's going around the heart itself. So usually when I do, uh, oops. When I do these ones, I would start the wrapping. Um, the start of the actual wrapping would be that connection in the middle. And then I just continue out from there. But because this was more of an example, uh, we're just gonna go ahead and because this is already good together, you could start the wrapping wherever you feel like. And I think the easiest for trying to get that nice uh, cross back pattern is here. So you just start the wrapping. And I usually like to go about three times and then I'll run it across and start the wrapping again. So you want to keep that as tight as you can around there. So that looks like two loops. That is threatening to go on my eyeball. Yes, and I will definitely say <laughs> this is not a uh, safe process. So I would definitely make sure you're wearing eye protection. Um, I have glasses that I wear all the time because they're prescription. <laughs> so... I have protection at least on the front of my eyeballs. Alright. Now one side is four, but the other side is three. I'm, I've kind of got my thumbnail in between there, but yeah. There's three. So you can go one of two ways. Uh, this is coming up and under, so you could wrap it over this time. Or if you want more of a sandwiched look, then you could wrap it under again. But I would say that's totally up to your discretion. I think I might go for the sandwich this time. If you go the other way, it kind of um, it mixes the over under, so it's more of like one singular layer in the middle. 
Whereas if you try to keep under under and then if you start doing over, like if you do under under on this side and then you start working on trying to cross over this side and you do over over, then it'll give kind of this more three-dimensional sandwich look. Whereas, uh, yeah, like I said, if you do the under over just in general, then it keeps it nice and one singular layer, but I kind of, uh, I like the sandwich look. So, I usually try to avoid, um, going across from full side to full side over in the middle. So I like to go, and that's why I started here, it's way easier to start at a tip of one of the curves of the hearts and go diagonally to the other side. Kind of, uh, I don't know, maybe a, a right around a quarter inch, half inch above the uh, tip of the heart. And we'll go ahead and this is where you got to decide, do you want to wrap it to the right and then curve? Or sorry, to the right and then cross? Or do you want to wrap it to the left and then cross? Because usually uh, whichever way you wrap it, um, it's going to look a little goofy if you end up wrapping it to the right and then crossing to the left. It can look a little odd. So if you're wrapping to the right, you should try to cross to the right. If you're wrapping to the left, then you should try crossing to the left. And I just realized I'm holding this for me. <laughs> yeah, right, right, left, left. So I think um, from here, I might go ahead and I'm going to wrap to the left and then see if I can uh, angle it from here to here and try to bounce that for a minute. See how that goes. So we're going to start wrapping left. Alright, and you don't have to do three or two or anything like that specific. You don't have to keep them the same, but I definitely recommend it because it uh, it looks a little more co uh, cohesive at that point. But it's one of those, if you want that variability aspect in there, then you can go ahead and do, you know, twos, threes, maybe even wrap it four times just for differentiation <laughs> but uh, you don't necessarily have to yeah I like going ahead and keeping it uh, I wrapped three times before so I'm gonna wrap three times again and you definitely uh, when you push through and pull back when you're trying to form that little wrap down there you want to go ahead and pull it nice and tight and uh, before moving your wrapping I would go ahead and take your thumbnails and squish that together keeps it nice and tight and we went ahead and wrapped to the left this is coming up over so we're gonna over 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 See that, or if you're going for the uh, single layer, trying to melt them in the middle, then you can go over under. But like I said, I'm gonna go over over. Roger, roger. <laughs> so that's probably what I'm gonna do.
and at this point, um, you could just go ahead and try to wrap this here and see if uh, that ends it. Uh, barely enough. Alright, so there is that. And you could either stick with that the way it is, or if that's not quite enough wrapping for you, and you like something more like that a little better. Because this is kind of, uh, it almost has that barbed wire effect. And uh, this one is more like chain link. Very messy chain link, but chain link nonetheless. Uh, if you like more of the barbed wire look, you can just go with that. And it's really cool. You can just, uh, uh, like we already said, um, I dropped the jumper. I forgot. Okay. <laughs> you could put that on a key ring. You could put that on a chain. You do a double chain like that. You could uh, do a single chain. And like we said, you need the uh, jumper like this guy. Oh yeah, I can see this was uh, one that I was going to keep for myself because I used gold because I don't know where any more silver jumpers are. <laughs> but yeah, you could uh, stick with this or if you want to, you can take more of the wire that you want to wrap with and just start anywhere you want to like we did the first time and just keep crossing it over and basically all you're doing is just you do what looks nice to you and once it looks good to you stop if you're happy with it then uh, just go with that like I said throw that on the necklace or keychain or both <laughs> and you can go with that the other thing is um, like I said the tiny version if you try to make it it doesn't turn out very well so if you want like uh, if you make something like this and uh, the reason why I was trying to make tiny versions before is I was trying to make matching earrings and I had to go a size up in order to keep them the same look. But if you can make one that is kind of more elongated like this, um, I did find uh, you can get these little hearts in a chain from uh, some craft stores. And you can just repurpose those for matching earrings. They won't have the little loops but you can just go ahead and repurpose these for matching earrings. That'd be easier. Or you can try to fight with it and see if there's some way that you can come up with a tiny version that doesn't look like that that matches this. But yeah, that was how to make a little wire heart for keychains, earrings, necklaces. He could even do, if he can perfect how to do the small ones, he could do like a charm bracelet. That would be really nice. And that would make for a very lovely um, Christmas gift. Those are very nice for like white elephant gifts, stuff like that. Or just if you want it for yourself. But yeah. So I hope you enjoyed the first DIY video of Makesgiving, and I hope this was really fun for you, and you can uh, make something nice and pretty like this. Maybe make one for yourself first, see how you like it, and then maybe make one for like a best friend, or your mom, or uh, uh, the crazy lady that lives next door with like 16 cats. Um, 
Maybe she would want one for every cat. You never know. <laughs> but yeah, you got plenty of options. So I hope you have fun with this and I hope you have a very awesome November. And if you would like to see more stuff like this, stick around and we'll be making more stuff like this for the next few rounds of Makes Giving. Hope to see you then. Celta K, signing out.